Hi guys, I'm Eddie of Ulu Yoga. I just want to make a short informal video telling you about our hybrid multi-style yoga teacher training courses in Koh Phangan, Thailand. Now we make all these flashy promo videos, you know, on the beach and on the cliff, you know, with these beautiful people doing these crazy advanced poses. So I just wanted to sit with you for once <laughs> straight and tell you uh, what we're all about. And you can decide for yourself, you know, if it's the right fit for you. So uh, since 2014, we've been doing yoga teacher trainings in Thailand. Ulu Yoga is a registered school with Yoga Alliance. Uh, we have a 200, 300 and 500 hour uh, certified programs, uh, which you can do online or in person, you know, or both, uh, as we're offering now. Uh, we're rooted in traditional Hatha and Vinyasa yoga. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of uh, time and attention on the details of uh, analytics and technique, um, going deep into uh, pranayama and meditation. Uh, but we're not so weird and culty about it. You know, we like to have fun. Uh, I think that's really the kind of key feature of Ulu Yoga is we want to have a good time. And I feel like that is the most you know, healing thing is, uh, you know, connecting with people and smiling and just kind of losing yourself in things that you enjoy. You know, it just seems natural to me. So we do uh, aerial, acro and sup yoga. Now, the sup is so awesome because you swim out there and you look back at the coast and it's just gorgeous. Uh, Acro yoga is cool because you get to connect with people uh, that, you know, breaks the ice and you really learn how to balance and getting comfortable with touching other people because, you know, you need to do that when you're correcting uh, people in poses. Uh, aerial yoga. Uh, I love. Uh, this is something uh, I specialize in and I created my own uh, aerial hammock with cushions. It's so much better than these regular uh, parachute hammocks with the handles that everyone else uses. So uh, we do uh, week-long aerial yoga courses before the 200-hour courses. Um, and that became popular and, you know, we started doing 300-hour courses. So now we offer a 500-hour uh, yoga teacher training. One thing we're really passionate about is uh, teaching practice. So uh, you will practice teaching every day in pairs and then leading the whole group. Uh, and when you finish the course, you will be uh, skilled, experienced, and confident and ready to teach professionally. Uh, that was a big problem when I did my yoga teacher training. We didn't spend much time with teaching practice and I finished the course. I wasn't ready. I didn't know how to teach. We learned about yoga. We learned about teaching, but uh, when I created this program, I said, okay, number one thing, uh, you will learn how to teach. <laughs> you will uh, be ready to go out there and uh, teach professionally and succeed, okay? So since uh, 2017, we've done uh, yoga teacher trainings like every month in Bali and Thailand. Uh, and you know, every course, we've got our core teachers and we've got our guest uh, instructors. So we've been really... Uh, lucky to have some you know, real masters uh, working with us. So what's great about the online course is, you know, I get to put everyone together and uh, choose like who is the expert in that particular topic uh, and use them for that module. Uh, now in Thailand, uh, you get to work with these same people because we've been working together for years and you know, we are a real family. It's not just something that we make up. And you know, I pick cool people to work with who are, are you know, skilled and experienced, but also warm-hearted and uh, you know, light-hearted. Uh, I like instructors who are uh, charismatic and uplifting. You know, that's more important than someone with all the certifications you know, in the world. So since COVID happened, uh, we had to go online entirely, and that was challenging. Uh, it took about a year honestly, of uh, recording and re-recording everything on different locations with different people uh, and changing platforms. Uh, ultimately, we um, came up with a really great online course. Um, people record themselves teaching and they submit it to us and we give them feedback. We have daily live classes um, that you can come and ask questions about and meet the other students and instructors. So. Now that the world is opening up, 
Uh, it's pretty easy to get into Thailand, you know, at this very moment. Uh, so we're doing hybrid courses, right? So you're going to do two weeks online and two weeks in person. Or if you're doing a 300 hour course, you'll do three weeks online, three weeks in person. Now for the online portion, I say two or three weeks, but really you can take as much time as you need. You know, if you book your course two months in advance, you start your online work and then just take it easy because you know these things especially if you're new to yoga uh, it takes time to kind of wrap your brain uh, around all of these uh, advanced concepts so i think it's great that we've got these online modules especially for the more uh, difficult subjects like a philosophy and anatomy and uh, analytics now while you're in thailand uh, you have more time to do like the practical things like uh, teaching practice and the, the workshops of Ariel Acro and stuff. Uh, and we do a, a sound healing with the singing bowls. Uh, we do some kirtan chanting. Uh, we go out to the sauna. The sauna is so amazing. We go out there at night and there's a bonfire and there's a steam room and it's like so mystical and transformative. You'll love it. Uh, and then we do yoga on the beach sometimes. Now, our location on Koh Phang Ang is super great. <laughs> it's in the northwest part of Koh Phang Ang. Uh, that's really quiet. That's where all the, the yoga and wellness centers are. Uh, Koh Phang Ang is famous for these you know, full moon parties. It's way in the south. So you can go to them if you want to. But uh, up in the north where we are, it's super shanti and quiet and beautiful. And uh, uh, the resort is uh, right on the beach and there's uh, a beautiful uh, secret beach um, to the left. And then uh, where we are is a really small private beach. And then on the right, there's a really long, uh, wide beach with uh, lots of resorts and activities. So it's perfect. You can just walk here and there and there. Uh, there's um, really amazing uh, vegan cuisine cafes. There's, you know, pizza shop. Uh, there's, if you want to do a beach party, you have that, or if you want to do kirtan or ecstatic dance, you got that. Uh, so there's lots to do. Um, we generally uh, encourage, you no know, more, uh, healthy related uh, activities that are not involving, uh, you know, drinking or drugs. Okay. Um, what's, uh, unique about this course is, uh, we give a special attention to, um, uh, nutrition. So we do um, a vegan diet and uh, intermittent fasting. Now, that's not as weird as it sounds, okay? We just avoid animal products and we uh, try to scale down the time that you're eating within six to eight hours. So in the morning, you just like have a juice and then you wait until 10 or 11 to have a lunch. And then we try to have an early dinner, a uh, light dinner, usually like a soup, because that's something that's yeah, very easily digested for your body so that when you go to sleep uh, your stomach is uh, relaxed and um, this really uh, allows you to sleep better and have more energy in the day and you know uh, as you uh, are on this uh, yoga training you know day by day uh, you're getting more exhausted physically and mentally and that's why it's so important to you know eat the right things at the right time. So let me tell you about some other choices that you have for yoga teacher trainings. Now, some are more expensive and, and some are cheaper. Um, you know, and there's a variety of reasons for that. Maybe uh, they're doing a special discount that month and you get like a really expensive training for cheap. That's great. Um, we are offering um, uh, usually got 200, 300 and 500 dollar uh, early bird discounts when you book like six or eight weeks uh, in advance. So that's great if you can catch that. Um, some schools are just cheap because they're cheap. <laughs> you have to be careful with uh, these uh, generic yoga alliance um, companies pretending to be yoga alliance, but they're not. Uh, they call themselves like Yoga Alliance International or Yoga Alliance Australia. And just, I mean, you just look at yogaalliance.org and then look at these other um, uh, websites and you'll see clearly that, you know, these are, you know, knockoffs. And so just be careful um, when you choose your course, uh, you know, 
are they? And then, and then some schools, they just make up their own certification because they're, I don't know, too lazy or cheap <laughs> to apply for a qualified credential. I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, Yoga Alliance is the most widely uh, recognized organization. Um, they had to receive some uh, bad press years ago. And honestly, it was a bit too easy to get qualified to become a uh, yoga alliance school but uh, that's changed a lot in the last few years uh, they've really raised the bar um, with so many standards um, yeah and it's kept me busy uh, factoring in uh, the right amount of hours for what subject and you know which teacher can teach what and you know what credentials that they need to have yeah, and uh, I'm I'm happy to rise uh, to the challenge to create you know a, um, a better structured um, program. I was a bit annoyed at first, but hey, that's how it is. Uh, one of the factors to really watch out for is um, the location. Um, if you don't know uh, Kofangang, I'll tell you that. Um, getting around there can be difficult it's really uh, good to choose a school which is right on the beach as we are um, even if your school says well we're just five minutes from the beach well that could mean five minute bike ride which could mean a 20 minute walk which could mean uh, you've got your break time in the afternoon when it's like a hundred degrees and the sun is blazing down and it's too hot it's too long to walk there um, there are taxis, but they're these big pickup trucks, um, and it's not the most comfortable or convenient or cheap thing. Uh, you can rent a motorbike, but if you're not experienced, and even if you are experienced, it's really treacherous. You know, the roads are really sandy and curvy and hilly, and it's too easy to get into an accident. So just choose a location that's on the beach, like Ulu Yoga, and then you don't need to go anywhere you can walk to different beaches and different uh, restaurants and cafes uh, and uh, dances or we'll all go together uh -huh. we'll arrange it for you uh, another thing is the uh, yoga shala now if the yoga shala is right on the beach you know that looks good in pictures but Staring out at that bright light all day long, you know, really wears you down and it's usually too hot. Um, and then when we get uh, some weather, like uh, some uh, rain and wind, you know, that's all blasting into the shala. So I won't name any names, but there are you know, several uh, schools uh, on Thailand where they the shala is right on the beach and <laughs> you don't want to be there when the weather kicks up, as it can often do at Kofungang. So uh, at Ulu Yoga, the shala is up the hill a bit, so we can still see uh, the ocean. It's very beautiful. Uh, but you get down to the beach, I mean, you have to walk about five minutes, which is perfect. It's not too far, but you're up the hill a bit, and so you have a, a bit of protection, which is really nice. Uh, there's some yoga shalas that you'll see which are all surrounded by glass. Uh, that looks really beautiful, but it's so hot. Uh, Thailand is hot, okay? I'll tell you that. Uh, and so at our uh, studio, um, we have glass windows going around the whole shala, um, but luckily we have a, a lot of greenery in the background and we've got tinted windows and we have curtains and we've got fans all over the place and the ceiling is quite high. And so with all of these factors combined, it allows us to maintain a cool temperature. Now, getting to Kofangang is a bit difficult. Uh, you want to fly into Bangkok as early as possible and then plan a flight to Koh Samui like a two hours after you land. Uh, and then you'll catch the next ferry over. Now, if you get to Bangkok too late, um, you know, it's possible that you'll miss that ferry uh, to Kofangang and you'll have to spend the night in either Bangkok or Koh Samui which is kind of annoying. So get to Bangkok early, okay? A cheaper option is to fly from Bangkok to Suratani, and then you have to take like a four hour bus ride uh, to the ferry, and then uh, you'll ferry over to Koh Phangan, and it's gonna stop at Koh Samui. So it takes a while, but it's a lot cheaper. So if you wanna save 100, 150 bucks, 
you know, take the long way. I really recommend <laughs> flying directly to Koh Samui. It's a nice airport. It's really small and it's all open. It's beautiful. Okay, so if you have any more questions, just go to our website. We have a live chat. Uh, we have WhatsApp, a email. Um, and you can message us or just jump on a, a call uh, and talk to us you know, face to face. You know, we've got people 24-7 uh, standing by. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Eddie of Uliaga. Namaste.